What's up, ladies and gents? My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and play some more Renowned Explorers, a game that I've had a blast with. I really do sincerely like this game. This is one of those games that very rarely do I ever find a game that I can 100% vouch for and just like be excited about, but this is one of them. I have noticed, by the way, I just noticed this a second ago. If you use V-Sync, the game is locked to 50 frames per second. That's okay, though, because this isn't really necessarily like a high motion, high graphics game, so I'm not really concerned about the frame rate so long as it's playable, and 50 is definitely acceptable. In the last episode, we had explored a Highland Island, and along the way, a Highland Island... Yeah, I say that one ten times fast, I suppose. Not really a tongue twister yet. A Highland Island Ivan. You might be able to do something like that, and then you'd have to do something afterwards to make the tongue twist a little bit that starts with like a V, maybe. We had explored a Highland Island, and we were looking for a Viking ship that was owned by Leif Erikson, and along the way we had gotten into a lot of adventures. We got a big stack of cards that we're going to get to take a look at at the end of our adventure. We didn't get much research, which is concerning. Research is really, really important in this game, and unfortunately, unless we can get it done properly... It might just be due to the nature of the island that we're on right now. It's not a very big place. The maps do get more interesting after this one. This is just the tutorial island. The Viking boat must be nearby. Once you get there, this expedition will come to an end. You can come back to this place when you wish to continue later. But are you ready to go? We are, because we just ran out of supplies. So there is no better time to finish an expedition than when you run out of supplies. So onwards. The crew searches the hills and dales thoroughly until you spot in the distance an intact Viking boat. The crew rushes towards this amazing find. It will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned Explorers Society. The crew is stopped by a familiar face, the French explorer Rivolo, number one in the most promising explorer's rankings. He laughs. Thank you, amateur. How very lucky you are to find this fine Viking boat just after me. Un under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out. And I really need this treasure to affirm my number one position. Your help will not be forgotten. Well, maybe. Explain that this is your treasure. Rivalo continues. Well, most unfortunate. Maybe you should talk to my most intelligent and diplomatic scientist, Lady Cassandra Shafiq. I am positive that she'll handle this situation with utmost respect. Will I take the vessel? So he's going to try and steal it. And this is actually randomly generated. He has two adventurers with him. This fight is different. Every time you go in, it just picks a random adventure for you to fight against. His chest hair is like mad. If I had chest hair like that, that was just like in a solid blankety mass on my chest, I would wear V-necks all the time too. Nonetheless, mine's kind of curly and just kind of like puffy. I don't know. It's not as aesthetically pleasing as his. Can chest hair be aesthetically pleasing? I'm going to assume that it can for right now because I believe in manliness. Old school manliness. Before Anna can stop Rivalo, his crew scientist Cassandra steps forward. Hello, fellow renowned explorers. Why is such a hurry, no? Let's discuss this matter at an easy, civilized pace, yes? She's not letting us pass. Well, she's gonna have to discuss it with my fist! It looks like she's got some mobsters with her. How come I don't get mobsters? So if we do this, Cassandra thinks I'm a brute. If we do it friendly, she is pleased with our diplomatic approach. And if we do it devious, she appreciates that we don't resort to violence. But my characters aren't friendly, they're all a bunch of dicks. Like, the best way for us to resolve this would be punching, but I don't know if it's going to let me. Let's see what we can do here. If things get desperate, now if you're ever surrounded, strategy 101, if you're ever surrounded, you push hard in one direction, and then you redouble your efforts back in the other direction once you've cleared off one of your flanks. So we're going to push hard this way. This is going to force them to take a couple of turns to catch up, while at the same time allowing us to focus on these individuals over here. Now, just in case I one-shot this guy... I want to keep one person from moving so that we can move into this slot over here and maybe kill off a second guy. So, with Dolores, we can be friendly on this side. I mean, we can make it happen, Gappin, if we wanted to. Or we could be devious. Let's be devious. Haha! -ha, I threaten you with neck cuttings and KOs! I assume that the enemy would be afraid of one before the. Oh, man. Well, can you. Oh, we don't have any nearby targets. Well, can you be friendly then? Yeah, friendly him to death. He tells a merry British joke. And then the mobster is impressed and no longer wishes to stop us. He also turns pink like, I don't know, like some kind of My Little Pony character. We'll step off to the left, and there's no Overwatch or anything like that. So, oh man, we have arrogance right now. So unfortunately, we have less speech defense. Luckily, the way these guys are wielding these cudgels, I don't think they're going to try and talk to us. She might, though. And so she's got a snake with her. Dude, that's hardcore. I don't mess with snakes. I saw a pimp with a snake in the mall the other day. It was hella crazy. There was a pimp in the mall. This happens in the Bay Area all the time, by the way. Just don't worry about it. Don't question it. 
there was a pimp in the mall. I guess he was dressed like a pimp anyways. He had his per he had purple gaiters on. He had a purple suit on. He had like a purple, it wasn't a fedora, I forget the name of it. It was like the hat that Heisenberg wears, a trilby? I don't think it's a trilby either. There's a lot of different names for hats and I don't know them all. But anyways, it's the hat that Heisenberg wears. But it was a purple one with like a gold band around it. I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna get started on these gents. She can take him out with a devious attack right there. Ha ha! Feel my- <laughs> Well, not feel my lightning, but feel the threat of lightning which may strike you if you don't run away terrified right now. So anyways, what I was saying here is there was a pimp in the mall. He had a snake though. Like, he had a full, like, purple suit on with, like, a gold chain and everything like that. He had a gold wallet chain, purple gaiters, and then he had a big-ass, like, a huge boa constrictor. It's probably a good 10-foot boa constrictor. It was a big-ass boa constrictor, and he was kind of short for a pimp. Like, he wasn't a big, threatening gorilla pimp. He's got to be, like, a finesse pimp or something. Anyways, the snake was so big that even, like, wrapped around his shoulders a couple times, it was almost touching the floor. It was a big-ass snake. I'd be like, dude, so does your does your normal Mackin game for getting attentions of the opposite sex involve snakes? Does this work for you? I don't know. I kind of feel like it's a little bit like prop comedy. The moment that, like, hitting on girls and, like, sort of interacting with the opposite sex involves... The moment it starts to involve, I suppose, like, props, it's just when I fall off. I'm like, eh, magic tricks, snakes... A weird cane it just it doesn't work for me I don't know I lose interest she's trying to seduce my scientist unfortunately it's a little unfortunate don't take that as a good thing that pink thing that's happening right there that's actually bad and so she's impressed which means that her speech defense she's flattered and so her speech defense is much lower lady you're about to get dealt with so should I punch her or should I be devious it looks like she has no physical defenses so we're gonna go in with the punching Kiyoi! And so there we go, we got a lady fight going on. You skank! Pulling hair and all that kind of stuff. I think I shall also have the gentleman punch the lady. Are you a gentleman anymore if you punch ladies? I don't know, but there it is. He laid hands on her quick. She's getting whooped on and she does not look enthused about it. I want to hit her with my taser gun, so let's do this. Taser gun! That was my most favoriteest thing I have ever seen. I love lightning and also lightning powers, and so that makes me happy. We are now brutal. We are the killer. And so we get plus 20 to our speech defense, which is probably a good thing. Because on this turn, I get... Oh, no. We've been AoE'd. On the plus side, the AoE raised our spirits, so that's pretty good. Please don't knock out my character. Oh, he's a charming... He's a charming bruiser. I thought that he was going to hit me with that club, but it looks like he's gone back on it. He's like, Toodaloo, would you like to go and buy some provolone with me? I'm like, no, I don't think I want to go cheese shopping with you. What an odd thing to ask. Would you like to go cheese shopping with me, madam? And down goes the enemy. We shocked her into submission. And because of that, we got the aggressive victory, and she thinks that we are a brute. I don't really, unless she's going to show up later in the storyline, I don't really care what she thinks about me. I feel pretty good about that. Cassandra is livid. Barbarian, how dare you attack during a civilized conversation? People like you are the reason the gods left us. And she leaves to follow Rivolo, who has already disappeared with the Viking ship. But while storming away furiously, she accidentally drops a treasure map. You're left with a cryptic treasure map. Its meaning is pretty cryptic. Yeah, I took that from the cryptic treasure map part. The treasure map is passed around, and after investigating it, the crew states their interpretations of the treasure map. This is going to unlock one of our future missions, and so a landmark on the map that the locals might recognize. So this is going to give us a mission in the Highlands. This will give us a mission, not really sure, and this one will give us a mission that I think is somewhere in like Germany or something like that. It might be up in like Norway or Sweden somewhere, but I'm pretty sure the Viking Antiquity site, well maybe, maybe it's in England, I can't remember. I've done the Viking Antiquity site before, so let's do this one. Time to work hard and dig up the ground around here. Sure enough, the locals who started watching the Industrious Crew are glad to point out where some of the work could still be done. The crew earn respect and some coin from the endeavor. In the end, you gain an even bigger reward, a new treasure. So there it is. We got ourselves a Viking helmet. We got a nasal helm, so that's pretty cool. And that gave us five encounter tokens. And then we got ourselves 25 renown and one more insight. And so insight, you can use it when you go to universities to generate whatever materials you need. So you can use it to get yourself any of these things up here. With this last find, your expedition still concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that if you want to be the most renowned explorer, you'll have to beat Rivolo. Now it's personal. A Rivolo sounds like a kind of bug that eats your corn crop. 
<laughs> He'd be like, watch out, there's Revolos in the field. He'd be like, oh man, I hate it when Revolos come. Can we get an Exterminator? Can you go blow for Revolos? And so as you can see, each of those cards we pick up generates more materials for us. And so we ended up with about 120 Renown, 311 status, 300 gold. Not a lot of research though, which is going to be problematic because research is... Research essentially unlocks more efficient ways for you to generate more renown and other things and more research if you want it And so unfortunately not having a lot of research can be troublesome Exotic location uncovered in the Icelandic Isles by promising explorer Anna Proskuriakova Explorer Society Award members are excited at the progress of this awesome autocrat All right, well Revolo has 2,000 renown so in order to beat him and his smug stupid smile We've only got 120 we got to move our way up through the rankings. Let's close this on down. A magnificent job. The Board of Renowned Explorers International Society is impressed by your exploration skills in the Highlands. For this achievement, Chairman Pinkerton gives you an upgrade to your airship, which will allow you to carry more supplies. Every land that I'm in is the Highlands. Blowing no smoke clouds. Alright, so we got a upgrade badge. Very, very cool. So that's going to give us a little bit more insight, which I'll probably use to generate some research. And we can carry three more supplies out on our adventures now, which actually is really, really helpful. Pinkerton says, We are pleased that you're aiming to become the number one explorer. However, I wonder if you can beat the already successful Reva Lowe. We hope that you will uncover many secrets in your endeavors. The society has many leads as to where secrets may lie in wait. You can do four more expeditions before the most renowned explorer is elected. So make them count. What if I want to make them duke? What if I want to make them baron? You gather your thoughts to determine the course of action. You can spend your research on unlocking technologies, insight for resources, status for entourages, and gold. For shops. Okay, so let's keep on going. I already know this stuff. And so we'll prepare for our next adventure. If we choose an expedition, what's available? We've got a Hungarian fort. We've got the Icelandic Isles, which we completed already. We can go to a Caribbean island. I did the Hungarian fort in my last playthrough, and you have to deal with cultists if you go there, which are pretty fun and cool. You can fight them violently, though, which is really, really nice. So that might benefit our character. I think the Caribbean island, you fight with pirates. But Charles Templeton has gotten himself leveled on up. We can give him a better... Oh, we can make him better at tracking. Okay, so that's going to raise his grit pretty considerably, but it's only going to give him a 3% chance of evading. Or we can upgrade his diplomat perk to make him better at talking and better at defending from talking. So, I don't know which is going to be more useful. He has Survivalist 1 cooking. Survivalist 2 is pretty useful. Last time I played the game, Survivalist 2 came in handy a lot, so I might go with that even though the stat upgrade is worse. We can even that out with gear, I think, a little bit later. So we'll take Survivalist 2. And so now he's got tracking and also cooking. He's got etiquette and negotiation. So I think it's going to work out pretty well. He learned group insult at that level, and so the enemy becomes enraged if it's negative, giving minus 25% armor. It affects enemies in a cone. It increases the target's aggro, which means that they're going to attack you more readily. Adds a buff that gives affected enemies, debuff, minus 15 armor and minus 15 speech defense. He gains 10 power each turn while off cooldown to a maximum of 30% power. Okay, so that's pretty cool. This essentially makes him all around better and makes enemies all around worse. Anna Proskuriakova, my lady, what have you got going on? She's got naturalist, so she can learn chemistry, or she can go with engineering tinkerer. That'll give her what looks like attack and speech defense. That will give her only speech defense. You know, let's make her, let's give her a couple of engineering skills because I have made a lot of engineering checks in my other playthroughs. And it's always nice to have somebody around. It's odd to me. Well, she's good with electromagnetics. Okay. Never mind. I'm going to say it's weird that she built a Tesla coil without any engineering expertise because it seems like it'd be a little bit, it's not that difficult, but I couldn't do it without like a book or something. Alright, so on this side, the first thing that we need to do, we'll go to the world map, and each of these locations is the place where we can do stuff. In Berlin, we can trade our insight for research, which is what I'm going to do, because we need research. So we'll go in right there, that's going to give us 15, and that's going to give us 10. And so we ended up with 26 research, it's still not much, but it's something. And so what I'd like to do now is we're going to go to the research menu up here, and we got to unlock a chronicle. So choose this tree if you want stronger characters and to gain more from encounters. Each one of these, what I very much like about this game, one of my favorite features is that they label everything. Everything has a pop-out and tells you what it does. That's fantastic because it means that you waste a minimal amount of time trying to figure out what things do. It's very, very cool that they do that. And so this tree is good if you want to get resources from expeditions and jobs. Okay. This one is good if you want to get research or you want to upgrade your scientists. We don't have that many. 
We've kind of got like a multiple troop right here. So this one's for scientists, this one's for scouts, this one's for speakers, this one's for fighters. This one right here is just for all encounters. It makes you better at encounters. And this one makes you better at expeditions and jobs. Okay. So this one's going to be for trading insight more efficiently. And this one is going to be just for getting more research. I'm going to take Chronicles, I think, because more research is always nice. And I'd like to keep ourselves on the up and up with research. I wish we could get Tales to Tell on this level. Or Strong Resolve would be nice as well. Although you don't really need Strong Resolve if you're not planning on dying. So just a little caveat right there. You can also, by the way, you can click on any of the stuff down here. All five of these are at the bottom if you wanted to go down over here. And it'll tell you what you're trading and what you're trading it for, just in case you wanted to. We can go to the red square, which is where the black market is, or the red square. I guess it's a red market. And in the red market, we can actually buy new gear, which gives us better armor and things like that. It can get pretty expensive, though. Additionally, trinkets will give you extra skills, just in case you wanted to make these guys better at different things. Better at various tests. And so this will give you, for example, if you buy monkey wrenches for your scientists, it'll give her advanced engineering. If you buy a compass, it'll give one of your survivalists navigation. And so, little things to think about. You can also spend some of your renown or your status. You can spend your status to unlock more items. So if I click that right there, it'll actually unlock a lot more stuff. Just so, you know, if you wanted more things and you wanted to upgrade your item tech tree, and this goes up a long ways. Like, I've clicked this a lot of times and there are a ton of items in this game that you can play around with and I'm sure somebody smarter than me will come up with all the OP combinations. This place right here is where you hire an entourage or specialists and by doing so you get different things and so if you get the ambassador you get extra studying for solving encounters aggressively. If you go with these guys right here it looks like both of them give you something for solving things in a friendly fashion or you can take generic guys right here which just increase the amount that you get from the various cards that you flip when you're playing the game. And so this guy makes you get more status from your campaigns. These guys over here make you get more gold from collect cards. And these guys make you get more research from studying. For right now, I will probably take... The Ambassador means that it gives us a vested interest in finishing everything violently. But I'll probably go for lobbyists, I guess. So we've got two lobbyists for right now, which means that we're getting like plus two to six from each campaign card. Merchant's probably not a terrible idea. I'll probably take the research students though, so we'll take those right there, and then we'll also spend that. I've never played around with the helpers. Last time I played the game, I my last campaign I went for 100% specialists, and so I had tons and tons of specialists, and I didn't hire any helpers. This time around, I think I'm going to hire some helpers and just kind of see what happens. We can also upgrade the amount of specialists we can have, so that'll be interesting. should probably buy some items though, now that we have some Skrilla. I will probably take 15 grits pretty good. But trinkets are the obvious first thing that we should put in because a blank space being filled is better than any upgrade you could go from here. Because those will be kind of like, well, they'll be upgrades, but they'll be a lot more diagonal than upgrades. So these right here are 100% 90 degrees vertical from, you know, whatever axis you're playing with. So let's see, I guess we could just say perpendicular. We'll go with... Well, we don't have enough money for everything, so I'll probably get a machete right here. That gives stamina to my athlete, so that's good. I will more than likely go with the monkey wrench for the boss lady. So that she gets the upgraded engineering ability. And that's about all we're going to be able to afford for right now. Let's pick our next adventure. Alright, so I think I'm going to do... The Hungarian Fort is fun. I We've already done the Icelandic Isles. The Caribbean Island I think I've done later on in the game when it was like 5 stars. I think you fight pirates and like pirate ghosts over there. But pirate pirate ghosts! Just in case you wanted to get Scooby-Doo about it. I'm going to go with the Hungarian Fort. I don't know. I enjoy anything that's sort of just like... I like anything Transylvanian. I like anything sort of... I don't know. I like things that are sort of embroiled in occult and werewolves and vampires and things of that nature. And the Hungarian Fort is very, very sort of supernatural. So, Lady Vaduva, the treasure of the renowned explorers, has notified you of a forgotten fort. It used to be a secret alchemy lab in the Middle Ages. There must be something amazing to discover around these forgotten places. Expect tactician, archaeologist, quick thinker, and diplomat challenges, as well as plenty of status. A devious approach might make most encounters easier. Unlocks the entourage shop in Constantinople. Okay, well, we are devious, so I'm going to go with that one. Sounds like a good match. I don't think we'll be able to get a lot of the challenges done because we only have a few of them, but 
The Hungarian Forest. With the details provided by Lady Vaduva, you must find and be able to find the secret fort, which used to be an alchemy laboratory. You enter the forest, there is no time to lose. And so there's the Hungarian Fort. Considering there's not a whole lot of benefit to going that way, I'm going to cut out to over here first. We got ourselves an encounter. You cross paths with a frustrated group of cultists. Ugh, I told you the Sinking Cathedral was the other way. Wait, we've got company. I bet they want to get to it too. What? The Sinking Cathedral? Don't try to fool me. You know about the treasures hidden within the Sinking Cathedral, but this treasure is ours. Let's make sure they don't find anything. They're engaging us in conversation, so let's go in. I always prefer that my enemies be engaging versus non-engaging enemies. It helps me, I don't know, I've got a short attention span. So the red guys are upgrades. We probably, it looks like we take their research no matter what we do. Well, it looks like these give us research and then a friend they approach means that they tell us everything they know about the Sinking Cathedral. We'll keep that in mind as we go along. Charles Templeton. And this is impassable right here, which is unfortunate because that puts them actually in a pretty good defensive position. Ew, I don't like that. That makes me sad. Can you get them with Terrify from here? You can get them with Friendly from there, though. 80% chance to hit with a friendly attack. Let's do it. Ha <laughs> ha! I tell you a merry jo- No, he fumbled! He fumbled, that means he missed. It's unfortunate, and it happens from time to time. No nearby targets for excitement. No near- Oh man, I may have messed that up. Experimentation. Affects enemies within the target circle. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and use experimentation on these guys. That was pretty badass. I did enjoy doing that. And doesn't she have like an AoE or something? Oh good, we lost our speech defense and now it's been escalated to violence. We can use Primal Roar. Yeah, let's do that. And that looks like it's going to give us a 100% chance to knock both of them out. Mama said knock you out. You got to click it twice. Man, the biceps and the triceps on that girl. Don't make her angry. She put you in a headlock. You'd be done for. Yay, friendly ability. Oh, that's not good. I hope these guys aren't friendly then. That's not going to work out well for us. Ah, he was able to close the gap. They could move farther than I thought they could. No, how dare you strike me with a scythe, sir? I am not wheat. Please do not strike me with your farming implement. So he took a little bit of damage right there. It appears as though they're going to be using devious attacks. Because she was on the yellow space, she regenerated a little bit of health on the way in. I could be friendly about this. Let's try and swap this into friendly mode. And so there it is. You're being flirted on by a buff lady. Some guys are into that. So there you go. He was obviously into it. He is confident that our cause is best. We've got a group insult over here, which is a cone attack. It actually raises their spirits, though, weirdly enough. I can go with try to impress. It looks like they're susceptible to friendly abilities. And we're getting plus 25 attack power from friendly. So let's give it a go, even though we got a chance to miss. Please don't fumble, sir. And so there's a little bit of damage done. It's going to put them in a good mood. If I bring... Oh, we get 30 speech defense. That'll be nice. I mean, our attack power will go down slightly, but still, it'll work out. I think that I'm going to try and excite my foes, unless I can take them out in a different fashion. It appears as though... Let's go ahead and terrify them, I guess. It does the most damage. Oogie boogie 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 boogie! And so there it is. I used the power of boogie boogie to lower their health down to yellow. Although that character is still bewitched by Argyle, and so... Luckily, who isn't bewitched by Argyle, though? It's a nice fabric. It really sincerely is. And so he's now terrified, unfortunately. Oh, and she resisted, which is pretty good. That means she didn't take hardly dam any damage at all. On this side, can you do anything friendly for me? Go ahead and heal him a little bit and make him a tiny bit happier because he's looking down in the dumps right now. You had to go up in the dumps where I live because the dump was, like, up in the hills. And so down in the dumps never worked where I live. You had to go up in the dumps, but still. Well, hit him with some cunning then. Hit him with some mad lyrical rhymes about knives to end their lives and stab their wives and then he'll get up out of here. Maybe go cook some chives from St. Ives. And then on this side, we've got one guy with full health, which is concerning. It actually looks like we can excite him better than anything else. So you know what? Go ahead and excite him with stories about, I don't know, nested dolls. Apparently that's what gets this guy going. He's pitching a tent right now over nested dolls. Who even knew? He's going to move to there, and hopefully he doesn't do anything too sinister. Oh, she resisted again. I think she has friendly resist is why. Does she have friendly resist? 
Like, why are they failing? Yeah, oh, she has terrified resistance. Okay, so she takes half damage from terrified attacks, which is actually making this a lot easier for us. I don't know if I should go with Devious or if I should go with Happy here. It looks like we take their research. That one, they tell us everything they know about the Sinking Cathedral. Let's see if we can get the Sinking Cathedral out of them. It might not work. We might not be able to backpedal at this point. We sort of spent a lot of our time. Oh, we took it right there. So friendly. Occultist is impressed, then they don't wish to stop you. We got two encounter tokens, which is very, very cool. That'll give us a bunch of status and a bunch of other stuff, so that'll be nice to think about. And then she got a buff, which will last for the remainder of the expedition, I think. Whoa, you truly are great explorers. Allow us to tell you everything we know about the Sink Cathedral, even stuff that isn't in our papers. Did you know that the place was cursed by its last bishop? Huh, so we got three research instead of getting like the customary one. That'll be really, really nice. I am going to scout this way because right there it's a little bit of a waste to get supplies right now if we don't scout further. Nothing special is found at this spot. A group of villagers skeptical, or a bunch of villagers is skeptical at your presence. Maybe a diplomatic approach will convince them. Mr. Charles, speak with them. 89%. Spin the wheel, little man. Ooh. How do we land next to the skull? That's terrifying. I don't like that at all. The villagers are convinced that the renowned explorers are great, and Charles is one of their finest. I am the greatest! And so, we get a couple of cards that we can flip over. I'm probably gonna go over here. Oh, there's a resupply on that side, too. Okay, well, let's resupply through right here first. Oh, we can't go that way? Well, then resupply there first. Oh god, what has happened? The earth is shaking. It's scary. The area seems bountiful with food. A scout could easily get some supplies here. Okay, let's have Charles do it. He's good at scouting, right? No. No. Yay! Charles scouts the area and hunts down some food for supplies. We got one supply. Oh, we didn't actually get that much from right there. On that side, there's a wits challenge and an epic encounter with the little punisher symbol. Okay. I don't know if I should go all the way back over here. One, it'll take me one, two, three. Hmm. Or I can just stay the course, although I wanted to take the wits challenge. Well, let's do the epic challenge first. What does that do? Friendly expedition. So she gets plus five speech defense and plus two. Cool. I think we're out of time for the day, though. My name is Splattercat. This is Renowned Explorers. I hope you like the game because I enjoy it greatly. This game is a lot of fun, and I can see myself spending a serious amount of time on it later in the week. I will see you all later. Hi-do, everybody.